And with that, as I stutter over my words, uh, we're going to move on to the love tier. And I say love because it's all the Pokemon that I love. I know, absolutely surprising. Uh, it really was hard to name these tiers, so if you're wondering why they suck so bad, um, there's your answer. I'm lazy, and I have bad ideas. Huh. I really don't know where I'm going with this, but just, just roll with it, okay? And uh, these 44 Pokemon, which will bring us right up to the top 10, are very important to me. They are my absolute favorites. Every Pokemon before this could have been interchanged, uh, could have been in any order, except for the ones at the bottom and the ones towards the top. All those guys in the middle could have been flipped around in any order, and probably would be if I did this tier list again. But all of these guys from here up, I love with all of my heart and would definitely be in the higher tiers of any future ranking video that I do. Um, and then we'll get to my top 10, which I saved for last. Um, so if you've seen any Pokemon over the last couple videos that you don't see in this tier right now, uh, either I've really changed my mind on them or more likely is that they're in the top 10. So there you go. You can start getting your gears turning and try and predict when my top 10 is. And if you get it right, um, I don't know, comment it below and do like a pinky swear that you got it right and I'll heart and pin your comment. Okay, deal. Um, but these are my absolute favorites. And uh, we're gonna start with number 44, Gumi. Gumi is just this fun little guy. He's just this sludge pile. And I've said it before with Pokemon like Grimer and mm, not Muck, I don't like Muck. Alolan Grimer. Swalot, all those piles of sludge. I love them. They're so endearing. And this guy is no exception because he is a fierce little dragon guy. Uh, obviously, I love Gudra, what it turns into. And I also love the adorable first stage. It's a match made in heaven. It's just cuter Gudra. That also is kind of stupid. It has like the Pokedex entries of it eating its own kind or whatever. And something about the horns being nutritious. I don't know. It's a simple design that really works, especially for a pseudo legendary. Open pages. And number 43 is Reggie Elecky, the other Reggie from Gen 9. 8, 8, not 9. Um, and it's just Reggie Drago's cooler brother, I guess you could say. Um, well, I do love Reggie Drago. Reggie Elecky will always hold a special place in my heart. A, for just being a badass, cool legendary, but also uh, the Crown Tundra, especially in Sword and Shield, has a really soft place in my heart. And part of that is because of Reggie Alecki, so I have to give props there. But also, the design. Can we talk about the design? I love, as I've probably mentioned before, Pokemon like Elekid. I don't know why I said probably, because I have. Uh, I love the uh, plug socket design for some strange reason. And I love the idea of just flowing electricity being a Pokemon. So the fact that they made it a Reggie legendary that is just flowing electricity bounded by those blue wire things is just so awesome. And it's also just so fast. Have you used this thing ever? It will outspeed anything. Let alone if you put a choice scarf on it, you are literally never getting outsped by nothing. And uh, I did use it back in Showdown uh, on that original team I said with Azumarill and Tyranitar and Metagross and all those guys I was talking about earlier. Yeah, Reggie Alecki was part of that team. And he was the big, big muscle of that team. Except when he hit a ground opponent and then he couldn't hit it. But that's besides the point. And uh, yeah, I just love my little electric Reggie guy, you know? And then number 42 is Flygon, which is another design that is iconic. Uh, again, it's one of those ones that's like, name one person that doesn't like Flygon. Yeah, nobody doesn't like Flygon. And I love Flygon, especially because I used it in my first ever playthrough of Omega Ruby, which was, as I've said before, my first ever Pokemon game. So obviously any of the Pokemon that I use on that team do hold a special place in my heart. This includes Flygon. But unlike the other guys in that team, this is a ground dragon type, which is already a baseline of coolness to add on top of all of Flygon's cool parts. And it also doesn't feel the need to be a big, strong, ooh, I'm a big buff pseudo legendary dragon. Well, also looking cool because sometimes you get Pokemon like Altaria, that are dragons that just kind of look dumb. And other times you get like a Salamence that just looks badass. It's a weird mixture of both that I kind of like. So, you know, that's pretty good. 
Uh, number 41 is Eveltal, or as my brother would say, Evetal. Um, and it's just the complete edgiest thing in the entire world. Uh, it's the Death Bringer. The Death Bringer. It's the Grim Reaper. Are you telling me that is not already the sickest thing you've ever heard? Wrapped in this edgy ass red and black design? Hello? Match made in heaven? I, like, this is every edgy person's dream. And I am no exception. I love Pokemon like Diglett, and I can admit that this is one of the coolest designs they have ever done. It doesn't have to go this hard. That's why I love it. It is the edgiest motherfucker and the bringer of death. That is the most metal thing I've ever heard of. Anyways, number 40 is Caparaja. And I use it because I like elephants and I think that's pretty cool. And their inspirations behind the whole elephant thing is pretty cool. Especially considering that elephants played a big part in Indian culture. Yeah, take that for a tone shift. And then I also use the Insular Shield as I have in my notes. I used Ellie, the Caparaja. So, yeah, yeah. Number 39 is Oddish. Uh, yeah. I'm just throwing you for a loop today with uh, changes in audio, tone, and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, this is the, uh, say with me now, the first stage of one of the Pokemon I really like. However, this time, it is a lot higher on my list because Oddish by itself is a design that, you know, is pretty awesome on its own. It's iconic. It is the weed Pokemon. It's the turn-up Pokemon, whatever you want to call it. Just a little blue guy that's got leaves on its head and you can't go wrong with that. Plus that smile, that wholesome smile, gets me every single time. Um, number 38 is Lorantis, um, paying off to the Fomantis thing I said earlier. Fomantis, no sorry, Lorantis is such a cool Pokemon. Um, not for many people because uh, I'm sure many people that play Pokemon don't have such an affinity for the grass type like I do. Um, but the fact that it flips a concept of real-world plants and bugs is so cool to me. The fact that it takes what an orchid mantis does, where it disguises itself as the plant, and flips that on its head to a point where the plant is pretending to be a bug to blend in as a praying mantis to scare off predators, is just a cool Pokemon concept. Like, it's not one of those origins that you have to dig really deep into you're like oh it's a it's a plant pretending to be a bug and it's flipped from a bug trying to be a plant this is confusing i know and that's just so cool not to mention gen 7 hello how many times do i mention that's my favorite generation of pokemon so of course the gen 7 main grass type i'm going to love and it's just a pink pretty grass pokemon i know it's technically a bug no, I know it's technically grass pretending to be a bug, so it should be part bug type, but I think it works better just being grass type because grass bug is an awful typing. Um, yeah, sorry, Parasect. And it's just it's just pink. I like pink. End of that. Uh, 37 is Poliwag. Um, he's just so cute. Take everything I said about Oddish and put it into this cute little blue polywog and it's just the cutest thing that'll make your heart melt it's so cute and then it evolves and it stays the same amount of cuteness kind of uh, the hands are a little weird i'll admit that's why i don't like polywhirl slash rat slash toad that much um but polywag being this little ball of cuteness with the whole spiral organ thing on the inside is so so cute oh my i think this might be the cutest Pokemon ever, in my opinion. And that's saying a lot, because um, I'm sure in some of these other entries I've wrote that, oh, this is the cutest Pokemon ever. But when I think of cutest Pokemon ever, I think of Poliwag, if that means anything at all. Anyways, number 36 is Iron Hands, more recency bias. And you're like, oh, he probably likes Iron Hands because everybody likes Iron Hands. <laughs> it's good and competitive. Uh, no. I liked Iron Goods, but Iron Hands, Iron Goods. That's what they should have called Deli Bird, honestly. They should have called Iron Bundle, Iron Goods. That's Todd's point. Uh, I liked Iron Bundle before it was cool. When I first saw this majestic cock-shaped creature in the wild, I fell in love. 
Don't clip that out of context, please. But Iron Hands is such a cool use of a Paradox Pokemon. It takes a Pokemon that was kind of mediocre to begin with and brings it to the future where everything is chrome and everything about it just screams alien. And this is from the future, even more than like the Ultra Beast did. It's just like the way its hands just float there using electromagnetism. And the fact that it's an electric fighting type, one of the coolest type combinations in the game, which Zorora totally should have had, by the way. And I think it's just such a good redesign for Hariyama. Hariyama, I'm sure as I've said, is kind of ugly. I'm not gonna lie, Hariyama's not the most attractive thing. But this guy is so cool, and it turns a mediocre Pokemon like Hariyama to something amazing. Which is what I love about certain uh, regional variants and Paradox forms and Ultra Beasts and all that stuff. It's the fact that they can improve upon already great slash mediocre designs and make them something even better. Like that is the pinnacle of what a regional variant should do. And that's why I love Iron Hands. Anyway, number 35 is Talonflame, who's best bird, best regional bird by a landslide. No other regional birds, I'm pretty sure, landed on my even top 125 or whatever I've done so far. So Talonflame wins by a mile. I've used it numerous times. Uh, the most important examples that I used it in my original Y playthrough, uh, Burb, B-A-R-B, that shows you how long ago it was. And he was both my MVP throughout that whole game, as well as my egg hatcher in the post game, and my flyer. So you know who was always in my party? This guy. You know who was level 100 first? This guy. And you know who has a really awesome design? This guy. I don't know, I just love Talonflame. And I know that's not a exactly revolutionary opinion, but yeah, he's really cool. I gotta agree with the masses on this one. Um, but now we're going to go to one that I kind of disagree with people on. Because number 34 is Eldegoss. People forgot about this thing. I guess is the best way to put it. People don't hate this thing. People don't love this thing. They're like, yeah, Eldegoss exists. And I'm like, what do you mean? You can't just pass off this majestic grandma dandelion. It's such a creative use for that kind of design. Because obviously, you know, old people have like white hair and are usually sweet and like flowers. You combine that with a dandelion who already has kind of white hair, blows away in the wind, kind of like old people because they're old and withering away. And it's just the sweetest little flower thing. And you got yourself one of the most wholesome Pokemon in the game. And yes, it is not very good in battle. Yes, the design could be better, but I don't care. I love it. It's the Gen 8 grass poster child. And I love that. It's so underrated in my opinion, and it deserves more love, even more than like a Jumpluff, or even Lorantis, and I love Lorantis, that's saying something. And I do want to give some props where it's due. It's shiny is fantastic. I don't know why, because it really doesn't change much, but just the shade of purple and pink it uses is so good. And eventually when I do do that shiny Pokemon tier list, you bet your ass is one of my favorites. So remember this for later, if you're even this far into the video, which is a, a feat of its own. Number 33 is Leafeon. Surprising absolutely nobody, after um, telling you how much I love all grass types for the past hour and a half, uh, does it really surprise you that the grass evolution is one of my favorite Pokemon? Uh, but weirdly enough, this is not my favorite evolution. We'll get to that one later. But um, for Leafeon in particular, the reason I love it so much and the reason that's the second best Eevee evolution is because it looks like a natural fusion of Eevee and a plant. Most plant Pokemon, or most grass Pokemon I should say, uh, despite me loving them, uh, Eldegoss is a perfect example, are just flowers. At the end of the day, they're just sentient flowers. And the grass starters are usually just animals that have grass growing on them. So when you have a mixture of both of those ideas perfectly, you get Leafeon. Leafeon is such a natural fusion of sentient plant and a plant and an animal with plant on it to a point where it looks like this animal just belongs in nature and it's not like artificially made by people. 
this looks like something that if I walked into the woods of like uh, in like Colorado or somewhere pretty in like a national park, I would see this thing hopping around in the forest. It's just that natural and that pretty. And I think that's the reason I love grass types is because they're natural. They're beautiful. They look like they fit in the world. They're not like artificially man-made creatures. They're just plants, which is something that they have a design to be based off, which I think is awesome. But this isn't about grass types. This is about leaf yarn. Uh, so keep me on track here. Um, it's just the pretty grass cat, I guess, which is ironic because there's uh, two more grass cats coming up on this list, as you probably see already. Uh, 32 is Smollett. He's so cute. Uh, admittedly, not as cute as Poliwag is, uh, but that doesn't really mean anything because he is just a better Pokemon overall. You know why? Grass type. Did I even need to say it? He is my grass type Poliwag. So while I do think I like Poliwag more, in terms of cuteness, I like Smollett more in design because it is just a olive seed that is sad. And that is the most precious thing in the whole world. And if I, if they, when they make Gen 9 plushes, I'm getting a Smollett plush immediately. That thing will be mine. I will hug it and it will go on my shelf proudly. It also has an awesome name, Small Live. I'm still not over that. Everybody was freaking out in that trailer about, oh, Fido and Le Chonk. And I was like, what about, um, what about my boy Small Live? That's, it's just such a good name. It fits so well, too. Uh, 31 is Rillaboom. Um, one of seven fully evolved grass starters on this list. Um, one of which we've already done, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, I think we've done two. I think we did Torterra, too. Um, you bet. It's one of seven fully evolved grass starters on my list. I love him. I really, really do. But he is too recent for me to truly say he is one of my favorites. Because in the long run, Rillaboom is awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love Rillaboom. He's my grass monkey boy. But when you put it next to other fully evolved grass starter Pokemon like Meowscarada, Meganium, Decidueye, even Pokemon like Venusaur, I would almost say... Venusaur and Rillaboom are almost equal. Obviously, I like Rillaboom more because of how much higher he is, but I don't look at those two Pokemon that differently compared to when I say Rillaboom versus Decidueye. That is a not even a competition. Decidueye wins all day, every day, both forms. So the fact that it's not my favorite grass starter combined with the fact that ED is a grass starter kind of puts him here, in, around the 30 mark, you know? He, I love him, but he's not the best of the best. I'm trying to make sense, but I don't think I am, so I'm just going to move on. Uh, and i got to flip pages here um, to 30, which is Porygon Z. Um, this is kind of an outlier because most of this tier is either badass Pokemon, cute Pokemon, or grass types. And this is just a cool normal type, which is um, weird for sure. Um, but this is one of the most unique and coolest designs I think we've ever done. Taking a Pokemon like Porygon that's supposed to be this computer Pokemon, but looks like it literally was the computer from the 90s, which I get was the inspiration. And if we just pretend Porygon 2 doesn't exist, because I hate Porygon 2, advancing it to this super computer that has like this really strange virus with the dubious disc is just such a cool way to take the line and i'm also glad it exists so we don't have to have porygon 2 as the fully evolved porygon evolution because i'll say it once and i'll say it again porygon 2 sucks go watch my bottom 100 slash gen 2 video if you want to know why um but the fact that it's just like a computer with a virus combined into a pokemon makes this thing an unstable mess that you can't predict and i love that it's so cool Number 29 is Sogaleo. Um, kind of bringing it back to Lunala a little bit with the whole Nebby and the cool design thing. It's kind of the polar opposite where it's the uh, the Lion of the Sun from all the alchemy stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, but the only reason I put Sogaleo higher than Lunala on the list because they really could go interchangeably if it wasn't for this one reason. Pokemon Sun is my favorite Pokemon game. 
Not moon, not ultra moon, not ultra sun, Pokemon sun. Because I have a soft spot for playing that game for 300 hours as a kid. I have boxes upon boxes of random ass Pokemon and Pokemon I truly adore. I have numerous shinies I just found on accident. And then I have my Sogaleo in that game, my original Sogaleo, my original Nebby, the one and only you could say. And to me, that makes him really cool. Not to mention, the design is awesome. Just like Lunala, this design is top tier for a legendary that didn't have to go this hard. The metal lion with the black undercoats and the yellow highlights, and just the pure white face with the galaxy forehead is just such a cool design combined with one of the coolest animals the lion the king of the jungle baby and you got yourselves one of the coolest legendaries in the game and speaking of legendaries we have number 28 Maridon. Um and you're like how did Maridon get this far up when it is so recent on a Pokemon as of filming the Scarlet and Violet is about seven months old which, in the long run, compared to all Pokemon games, really isn't that old at all. So the fact that Maridon as a legendary got this far up already says something about the story of that game. Because that game made me love my Maridon. It made me feel for my Maridon when it was being attacked by the other Maridon in that whole part with Arvin and Area Zero and riding him across the whole game made me love him. He is my Maridon, and he loves me, and I love him. And because of that, it makes my opinion go up of the Pokemon overall. Not to mention, it takes the future designs of the Pokemon that I love in like, Iron Hands and stuff, and adds it to a cool Lizard Box Art Legendary. The fact that he hovers on his wheels instead of using his legs is so much better than just having him walk around, because something about that is just really unnatural to me. And I feel like I'm almost putting Coridon through hard, unneeded work when I can just have the future lizard that just drives like a car, you know? I don't want to make my lizard have to walk everywhere when he could just fly. Because then, we both benefit from it, and he doesn't have to put in the work to do anything. It makes me feel like I'm not abusing him, you know? It also just has a cool typing. I like a lot of electric types because of the design aspects. It probably is my third favorite type that or ghost i don't know my number one and two are very clear and i'm sure you know it by now it's grass and steel surprise um but i just think that this guy in scarlet and violet i guess just violet was so cool and so awesome and in pages again number 27 is sprigatito the other grass kitty um and this is another recency bias um, it's just a cat. It's the little grass cat. I can't. It's so cute. Um, I'm sure it's like a universal thing to admit that cats are cute. Right? That is a pretty easy statement to make. Everybody agrees with it. Everybody knows it's true. It's as simple as that. You combine it with my favorite type and you got yourself a recipe for success. In the game, it is so small and so cute and the fact that it like, rubs up against you and uses its grass claws to kill people, or I guess Pokemon, I don't think it actually kills people, um, is just really cute and ferocious. It's just like a real cat. Not to mention, I just mentioned how much I loved playing through Violet. This is my starter in that game. Hell yeah, I have a strong opinion on it. You wonder why Pokemon like Claude's Ire and Cerulege are on my list. I'm pretty sure my whole Violet team is on this list because of how much I love that game. And if you want to know right now, my entire team was Miascarada, Orthworm, Satitan, um, Clodzire, Cerulege, and da, 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 Bugtrio. So I'm pretty sure all but one of those made my list, which is already really impressive. Uh, and it goes to show how good the game was. So obviously the grass starter is no exception to that. Uh, number 26 is Gengar. Um, iconic. Really iconic. It is the ghost type Pokemon, like how Alakazam was the psychic Pokemon, and Machamp was the fighting Pokemon. This is the ghost Pokemon. And since ghost is just 
objectively a better type than Psychic in fighting, I like him more. He's just this mischievous little purple blob, who's also a ghost, that is also terribly evil. Um, if you haven't seen the Mega or Gigantamax dex entries for Gengar, uh, that shit is scary. This thing may look cute, but it is a menace. And I think that's why we like it. It's like this mischievous little prankster type ghost, which is, you know, a poltergeist is what they do. It's a simple design done to perfection that ages very well, all things considered. Not to mention, of course I've used it before. I used it on my original Sun playthrough. I'm pretty sure it was called Gary or some shit. Some basic one like that. And then obviously Ash has one in Pokemon Journeys. Pokemon Journeys is probably my favorite series of the anime. Uh, and while Ash's, Ash's Gengar isn't my favorite Pokemon he owns in that series, it still is one that shows up a lot. So I kind of have a soft spot for that. Especially when it did that whole Gigantamax arc uh, at the beginning of um, Ultimate Journeys. I thought that was a pretty cool arc for Gengar. It also adds a couple more uh, check marks to its favor. Number 25 is Chikorita. Chikorita... Chikorita is an interesting one. Because obviously I could say the same thing like, oh, it's an adorable grass starting. But I think the reason I like it is A, because of how good of a design I feel Meganium is. And B, because of how much hate it gets. I'm not going to lie with you guys. I don't care for the other two Johto starters. I think that Totodile and Cyndaquil are mid, mid Pokemon. Yeah, I'll say it. I think Hisui and Typhlosion is mid. I think Typhlosion is mid. I think Feraligatr is alright. I like it better than Typhlosion. But when you put it against this cute little grass pear guy, they really don't stand a chance in my eyes. And I think it's because everybody hates on them. Everybody's like, oh, what are the best Gen 2 starters? Oh, not Chikorita. And they're like, flick it away in their mind. And I'm like, no, don't you hurt my boy, you know? He's just, it's such a timeless design. It's a little green pear with a leaf on its head that you just can't go wrong with. So all these people saying like, oh, Chikorita sucks because it's not good in battle. Like, yeah, suck it up. Not every Pokemon's going to be good in battle. Doesn't mean it deserves to get this much flag as it does. A lot of Pokemon aren't good in battle, but people still like them. Why is Chikorita an outlier? It's because it's a starter? We've had bad starters before that people liked. Uh, Newsflash, Charizard has a four times weakness. And in a lot of the games where there's no Mega or Gigantamax, he dies really easily. So how does Chikorita get this much hate when Pokemon like Charmander are objectively worse? It's just, it's a need to protect the, the hated, you know? You want to like something that other people don't. I like Chikorita because other people don't. If it was the most popular starter of that region, I don't think I would like it this much. So I guess thank you guys for not liking Chikorita. I don't know. That was a, that was a mini weird rant I just went on. Uh, number 24 is Groudon. Uh, talked about this earlier with Kyogre. One of the most menacing and badass designs. Obviously my first game was Omega Ruby, which had Groudon on the cover, uh, which already makes it really cool in my eyes. And not to mention it's just big, scary, powerful, menacing. All those words I written down all basically mean the same thing. I basically just want to say, you know, this is a big boy, and big boy scary, and this is what I want to see in legendaries. I want to see power, I want to see menace, and I want to feel intimidated. So that way, when they come to my side, it feels all the more awesome, which is what Groudon and Kyogre did for me. So for all future legendaries, unless you're going to pull a Maridon, I want big, mean, scary and intimidating. No dogs, um, no monkeys, no lizards. I want the big metal lions. I want the bringer of death. I want the big land monster and the big sea monster. Pretty simple request, but I think it is also an important one. Uh, number 23 is Galarian Moltres. And while it is not the bringer of death, I love this design even more than I love Yveltal. Because in my mind, these two are kind of the same Pokemon, but Galeri Moltres is just cooler Yveltal because it's on fire. It has red flames and a black body, and the colors mesh so well, and it is so menacing and so edgy 
I love it so much. Just like I said with Iron Hands, I love it when a regional variant can change a Pokemon so much to a point where it takes one of my least favorites to one of my favorites. Moltres, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't think has a good design. I really don't. But Galarian Moltres has one of the edgiest and coolest designs I have ever seen. And it's just so cool. The black and red is like the best possible color scheme to give a dark type Pokemon. Unless you're Thievul. Uh, and to give dark type birds. Except for Honchko. It works so well. And I wish that they could make more dark type Pokemon like this. That weren't like a Sneasel or a Murkrow. That just suck in my opinion. Because this is one of the best designed Pokemon I've ever seen. Because it's edgy. It's as simple as that. <sighs> Number 22 is Blastoise. And Blastoise, in case you didn't know, is the evolution of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Which is saying a lot about the 21 Pokemon above this one. Because Blastoise is a high, high bar to get above. This is the point in the list where things start going from babies. Oh, I love the edgy design. Oh, I love the turtle with the plants on its back. To I adore these Pokemon. And if you touch them at all, I will completely disagree and beat you up because these are my absolute favorites right here. Uh, but Blastoise is so low on my top 100 for a reason. And I say so low as in 22, because the evolution of your favorite Pokemon should be like number two on your list, usually. And the reason it's so low is because I feel it takes more from Wartortle than it does from Squirtle. But let me explain. Squirtle is this cute little guy. He's got this small little shell, and he squirts water out of his mouth. Wartortle is kind of an uglier version of Squirtle. It has weird feathers growing out of its head. It shoots giant beams of water. And the design, you could say, is just much more uglier. Now, when I put that in, like, a Venn diagram with Blastoise in the middle, it doesn't take a lot from Squirtle. It actually doesn't take anything from Squirtle. It takes all of its design attributes from Wartortle. And Wartortle is a Pokemon that I don't care for that much. If it wasn't the middle stage of my favorite evolutionary line of all time, or my favorite Pokemon of all time, I don't think I like it at all. So the fact that Blastoise takes more from Wartortle than Squirtle makes me like it less. Um, not to mention, the design is just not my favorite in comparison to the other ones on this list. It's kind of a little bit bland. It's just a blue turtle with guns on its back. And now that I've talked about everything I don't like about it, let me tell you everything that I do love about it. And the first and most obvious thing is that this is the evolution of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Like, hello. Of course I love it. No matter all the faults I just named about it being like Wartol, about it being bland, it's still the evolution of Squirtle. How can I not love it? Not to mention I've used it three times. Not to mention spin-offs where I pick Squirtle every time when it's an option. He's in my or Pokemon Yellow playthrough on the 3DS, where I'm pretty sure I called it Charizard. I know, very creative. Which actually got very confusing when you can't see the Pokemon you're sending in. I used it in Let's Go. I'm pretty sure I called it Tank, another creative name. And then the most important one was in Pokemon Y, uh, along with like Burb and my Mewtwo. I used this guy, Squirt the Blastoise. And this was kind of like the first time I ever used a Blastoise all the way through. And it was awesome. He was my main water type. He was mega. He was all that. He was very cool. But at the end of the day, Squirtle ran superior. And Blastoise, yes, is cool. It's a timeless design. Just doesn't hold up in comparison. It's just carried by nostalgia and my love for Squirtle. After that, a one hell of a entry slot. Number 21 is Toxicroak, who is a cool frogman. Um, it's just a cool 
Pokemon. Poison Fighting right off the bat is already an awesome type that has a lot of potential to be cool. But it's something about the red and blue color schemes along with the combination of a Poison Dart Frog. A frog known for being very, very venomous. As well as just the cool little claws in its hands. The red claws sticking right out that it can jab you with and inject you with poison. It's just so good. It's such a good design and I really love it. I also used it in um, BDSP. I called it Ivy. Um, shout out to the reference. Um, and it was awesome. This thing can kick ass if it gets Drain Punch, Poison Jab, all of those types of moves. It can both keep itself alive with Drain Punch and hit really hard with like a Swords Dance and Poison Jab. It's just a really good combination of moves on a really good design Pokemon. Anyway, number 20 is Espeon, and this is my favorite. Um, evolution, I almost said evolution, and I was like, hey, that's not right. Um, and I'm gonna seem like a complete asshole and hypocrite here, because the reason I like Espeon so much is the exact same reason why I don't like Umbreon. It's simplicity, and it's purple color scheme works to perfection here. The fact that it doesn't have anything going on its design. It's a sleek purple cat with a gem on its head and a weird shaped tail that does psychic powers. And the reason I think this one works so well and Umbreon doesn't is because this makes sense. Psychic type is all about simplicity. Psychic type is all about the mind, not the external body. So having a cat that is all purple, which is a really nice shade of purple by the way, and having it be beautiful and elegant makes sense for a psychic type. When you put it on Umbreon, it just looks kind of bad because dark types to me are supposed to be mean and vicious or edgy, which Umbreon is neither. And for all the shit that I give Murkrow, the one thing I can say about it is that it looks like it should be a dark type Pokemon. That thing looks like it's mean and vicious. Do I like it more than Umbreon? Hell no! But Umbreon kind of confuses me as to what it's supposed to be. It's a dark type Pokemon that doesn't look dark. It looks like a black cat. How is that supposed to be a dark type? But then you move to Espeon, where it's just a sleek purple cat and it works so well. I don't know how, they made one look so good and one look so bad. It's just such a weird balance in my mind. Anyways, number 19 is Torterra, and I thought we already talked about Torterra. Am I losing it? Did I do Torterra twice? I could have sworn we did Torterra already, because I definitely talked about it like I did. Well, that's what I get for not having a visual on me. Uh, but Torterra is this cool grass starter. It has a cool tree. Oh, I talked about Torchwig. That's what it was. Anyways, uh, it has like a cool nature giant ass tree on its back. It's like a whole jungle growing back there, basically, which I think is really cool. Uh, not to mention, that was my main man in BDSP, Trent. Obviously, it was my starter, and it carried me through the whole game. It carried me through the work battles numerous times in the post game that I used to level up. Uh, and it was my first Pokemon 8 to level 100 in that game, along well, with my gold deck. And I think that it's just another fantastic fully evolved grass starter. Don't know what else you want to say about it. Number 18 is Grookey. And for all the faults I gave Rillaboom, uh, I will not fault Grookey. Grookey is my boy. I love Grookey because he is this little, he is a little monkey guy. He is cute and he fits the grass type extremely well. Yeah. Um, not to mention, how could I have not mentioned this? The shiny Grookey I went for that took over two years and over 2,000 eggs that I got very recently, not really, it was actually back in September, which was a while ago, um, was a big moment. That was the happiest and most excited I've been about a shiny Pokemon ever. I was so excited, and that memory will always live on in my head. I was on the call with a friend, and I was holding up the phone to the screen, and I was like, tell me if I get it. Tell me if it's orange. 
Because I'm going to be honest, she didn't even know what Pokemon was. So I just said, tell me if the monkey's orange. And it was! And I freaked out on call. She was there for it, and that was so cool to me. It was a bonding experience. How could, how could I not love Grookey because of that alone? Grookey's ass. Anyway, 17, Chandelure. Cool, spooky, a ghost type, you know, all the things I've already said. Um, it, it's basically just Gengar again, but cooler. Not at all in the design department, but in terms of like what it stands for. Uh, the fact that it's a ghost fire type, where it's a chandelier that steals souls from people dying in hospitals. Which, just saying that sounds both creepy and metal. It's a weird combination, I know. But I'm gonna actually lean towards the cool side, because I think the design and the origin is awesome. Not to mention, it was the by far best Gen 5 design and best ghost design. So, yay Chandelure, two points for you. Uh, and it does show that Gen 5, despite what I've said, despite what others have said, has some good-ass designs in it. So, whenever I'm like, oh, Gen 5 kind of sucks, Chandelure is always kind of the golden child, or the exception to that rule, because Chandelure is awesome. Oh, did you hear that? That was my arm cracking. Holy cow, I hope that... Well, I want to check if I got that on uh, the audio recording. I did get it on the recording. It was a very awful sound, but now my arm kind of hurts. Anyways, number 16 is Wub Trio, who is my silly little W guy. The fact that they had the audacity to make Wiglet evolve into Wug Trio and make it three red Wiglets that spell the letter W is amazing. I love Wug Trio. It's so funny. I'm so glad I went in blind to the evolution because I could have looked up the evolution to Wug Trio before seeing it in game, but I didn't. And I'm so glad I didn't because the moment I first saw him in the wild and then, like, not even 10 seconds later, evolved mine into Wug Trio was such an amazing moment because he's just so awesome. Wiglet is still superior because of all the memes and, you know, it's a penis-shaped Diglett. Of course I love him. But this guy is three red penises coming out of a rock. It is so goofy. It is so outlandish, so out there that I can't help but love it. And I don't know anybody who doesn't look at this and doesn't laugh or doesn't smile. Like, you can be like, I hate Wiglet. But if I showed you a picture of Wug Trio and I was like, guess the name of it. And you guess something that's not Wug Trio. It's going to make you smile because it's goofy. And I love that about it. it. It isn't afraid to be goofy. And that's awesome. And I just realized we're hitting the two hour mark. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, this might be a two-parter. I might have to split it up by hour, depending on how this goes. Um, so if it's labeled part one, part two, you know why. Um, anyways, number 15 is Electivire. Um, basically what I said about you Elekid earlier and applying to Big Boy. He is just cool plug outlet man. I love the whole wire aspect of his design. I love the whole yellow and black yellow jacket slash wasp color scheme. It just makes him look menacing and like if he grabs you and shocks you with his wire, he might actually kill you. And that doesn't sound that appealing in concept, but when you're like when that's on your side of the field and your and your opponent has like a star me or something, something dumb, something stupid, and you have this giant electric outlet man on your side, it's so cool. It's just really awesome. And it's just such a good design. Oh my god, this might be my favorite designed Pokemon in the whole game. Because my whole top 10, aside from maybe one, I don't like because of the design. I feel like my top 10, obviously minus one, mainly there because of nostalgia, cuteness, or being a grass star. Um, actually no, there's two I can think of that are in my top 10 right now that are there because they have cool designs. So maybe it's not my favorite design of all time, thinking about it now. It might be my third favorite. Um, 
It's still so cool. It's so cool. I like the virus. It's just awesome. Uh, and number 14 is Meow Scarada. Uh, the Gen 9 starter that I never knew I wanted. I'm going to be honest. I was with everybody. I was like, I want the cat to be a cool saber tooth tiger. But I think they took the direction even better. The fact that they made it like a masquerade jester cat is so awesome. Like, they didn't take a Delphox approach of making it a wizard. They made it a courtroom jester. It just makes it so cool and makes its moves like flower trick. And just its general appearance seem more circusy, more... It's cool! It's an aesthetic that I don't know how to describe. Because it's unlike any other Pokemon, let alone any grass starters that we've had, just because of how interesting and cool the design is. Not to mention, I used it in Scarlet and Violet, like I mentioned with Sprigatino, which is a game I loved. Since henceforth, all those Pokemon that I use on my team, I like a lot. And obviously, Cilantro the Meowscarado was there for a long ass time. So yeah, I do love him. He's very cool. Number 13 is Poltegeist, a Pokemon that I thought for sure going in would be in my top 10. But alas, here he is. And uh, there's a there's a story for Poltegeist. It's obviously not like the most grand or strongest ghost type or Pokemon in the world. Um, but it is cute. And there's a story behind it. The day is September 26th, 2019. You are watching the most mediocre Nintendo Presents presentation you could ever imagine. The one where Terry Bogard was in Smash. A character that was revealed and I said, who? As well as many other forgettable games, so forgettable that I can't even remember. The section about Pokemon Sword and Shield, the upcoming Pokemon games, came on. In which they showed this guy, Poltegeist, a cup of tea that evolves into a pot of tea when, when exposed to the chipped slash cracked pot, depending on if it's authentic or not. And I, being my young three-year-old, not as in three-year-old as in like, I'm a three-year-old Goo Goo Gaga, as in three years ago, uh, as in that's what I mean by three years old. Um, being me from three years ago, absolutely fell, actually before, me from four years ago, absolutely fell in love. I was like, that is a guy that will be on my team and he will like it. And ever since then, my affinity for him has just grown and grown because in Scarlet and Violet, for example, he's so tiny. It's so cute! He's this tiny little teacup guy. Teapot guy, sorry. And it's just the goo. Sentient goo that lives inside of a teapot. And it's so cute. I can't help it. It's I love him so much, guys. I can't even tell you how much I love it. And the fact that it's 13, meaning there's 12 guys I love more than this, says a lot about those guys. So let's get right into that. Uh, number 12 is Orthworm. Orthworm, if Wiglet did not exist, would absolutely be my favorite Gen 9 Pokemon. And yes, I know what this sounds like to you. Oh, he likes all the Pokemon that are shaped like dicks. First of all, rude. And second of all, yeah, kinda. They're the ones that are the most funny to me. This little worm bus guy is so awesome to me because he's a steel worm. A animal you associate with being small, weak, you step on it, all bones break and it's dead. Is now hard as a rock, or I guess in this case a bus, and kicks ass too. This thing can take hits for days, and it has the ability to eat one of its super effective types, an Earth Eater. And you got a recipe for disaster in Pokemon Showdown. I hate fighting this thing. My team is not um not built for fighting Earthworms, and despite all that. He is my 12th favorite Pokemon of all time. Because he is goofy. Not every Pokemon needs to be big, strong, and scary. We can have goofy, silly guys like Orthworm. Not to mention, I had two, actually. One shiny, one regular. Orthworm that I used in Scarlet and Violet. Adam 
was my original one named after kind of the Adam's apple and how worms live in apples. I thought that was quite a clever. And then to add on to that, when I finally got my shiny during a um, mass outbreak, when I was sick, actually, I was very sick, pretty sure I had the flu, um, I named him Eve because Adam and Eve, you know, first people on earth, all that religious bible stuff. Adam and Eve, it fit perfectly. And now I, my Eve, the shiny one, is all Eve, Eve. Okay, yeah, see what you did there? Trained up. And he's on my team. He's on my final, final team. I think he's the highest level on that team, too. So he's my man in that game. My shiny, bright blue earthworm. And the design is just so good, too. Can't really go wrong with it. Number 11, and the final Pokemon before we get to our top 10, is Decidua. And I wrote it as Deadidua, which is honestly kind of a cooler name, I'm not going to lie. And regular Decidueye is a really good design. And I have so much nostalgia for this design. Because obviously, Gen 7, in case I haven't said it enough, was my favorite Pokemon game. Had my favorite set of Pokemon. Had my favorite grass starter, as you'll see later. And he evolved into one of the coolest final stage evolutions ever. Third favorite, actually, behind two other grass starters that you'll see later. And that's just so cool. The fact that they made him like a ghost Robin Hood archer person is also just really awesome. I think that they did a really good job with the design. They did a really good job of making Rowlet evolve and grow up. And I think that nostalgia plus a good design carries Decidueye to number 11. And now I'm going to take a break. But when we return, for you will be in an instant, we will discuss... My top 10 Pokemon. So for me, for right now, good night, and I'll see you all in one second. And welcome to tomorrow, and for anybody watching this as its own video, welcome to my top 10 favorite Pokemon. In case you missed it, uh, there is a two-hour video, either split into two parts or one gigantic video going over my top 100 favorite Pokemon of all time. This is just the top 10, which I figured is what most people want to see. Anyway. Number 10 in my top 10 favorite Pokemon is Wiglet. And the reason I love Wiglet so much is because of my love for my love for Diglett combined with my love for well, maybe it's not best to say that on the internet. But you know exactly what I'm talking about. The day they decided to make Wiglet the Diglett regional variant that they've already done before into a cock, a white Cock, I know it's a garden eel, I don't care, is the funniest thing they could have possibly done, and I absolutely adore it. Not to mention the fact that they put it in its own trailer. When that trailer released, I lost my mind. It was like Poltegeist on steroids because of how funny Wiglet was. There was all the memes going around of Wiglet and help guys, we breached the sperm wall and it's just Wiglet. Because Wiglet is inherently funny. He's a funny little worm guy. Even if you take all the cock, diglet, all that stuff out of it. It is just a funny little worm. And how could you go wrong with that? Not to mention they gave it an awesome name, Wiglet. Like, diglet is already an awesome name, but you put a W and it instantly just makes it ten times better. Anyways, uh, my number nine favorite is Blaziken. Um, the reason this one's here is because it is the final evolved stage of my fav- my first, not my favorite, my first ever Pokemon. Because if you didn't know, and if you watched the top 100 video, you definitely know that Omega Ruby was in fact my favorite game. So, the final evolved Pokemon that was the first ever Pokemon starter I ever had, being Torchic means that I absolutely adore him. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't like fire starters all that much. In most cases, they are the um, my last pick out of grass, fire, water. That's the case it's been in the last couple generations, and also the first couple generations. So there's some heat drop, I guess, for you. Pun absolutely intended. Um, but yeah, aside from the fact it was my first mod of all time, 
and the fact that I used it on my first game of all time. I just think it has a really cool chicken kickbox design because chickens, uh, more specifically hens, are very, very vicious in real life. Uh, that There's a reason they have a thing called cockfighting. Uh, it's because cocks are inherently vicious. Don't clip that out of context, please. Uh, but yeah, the fact that they made this just kickboxing, kicks, kickboxing badass chicken starter is another reason, on top of the many reasons, that why I love Blaziken. Number eight is Hisuian Decidui. What an awesome redesign. So in case you didn't see the top 100, I'll give you a little spoiler. Decidui was my number 11 pick. Hisuian Decidui both knocks Decidui out of my top 10 and is better in every way. This design is perfect. It is everything I could have ever wanted out of a Hisuian Rowlet evolution. And just thinking about Legends Arceus and using it in-game and how cool it is genuinely brings me joy because, yes, my little owl boy got in awesome form. And it's just the red autumn colors, the, the Japan hat on top of them that's shaped like a leaf. The fact that he looks mean and vicious. It looks like Hisuian Decidui was out for blood and also feral, which fits Legends Arceus a lot more than I would like to think. Um, and it just, it's like a fusion of both Blaziken and Decidui. It's perfect. It's awesome. Grass fighting, not being the best typing is okay, especially in Scarlet and Violet now that we have Terrasalizing. It doesn't matter that its type is worse than the original, its design is a billion times better. And it's just so cool! Not to mention that I've used it in my Legends Arceus playthrough, which I've easily put over 100 hours into trying to complete that perfect Pokedex. Which I still haven't done, by the way. So the fact that he's there the whole time, my main man on my team, Albert, shout out if you get the reference, um, makes me like him even more than I already do. Anyways, number seven is Vileplume. Vileplume is just this funny little cute plant monster that's from Gen 1. And I hate to be the person that's like, oh, because it's Gen 1, it's one of my favorite Pokemon. But it genuinely is. This was the first grass type. And if you haven't seen my top 100 Pokemon, there is a lot of fully evolved grass Pokemon on our list. So the fact that this is the, the first ever, not starter, grass, fully evolved Pokemon in the Pokedex, aside from Paris, makes it really stand out in my opinion, because this was the OG guy. And on top of that, I just think the design is really cool. I like the whole red flower design, because it's actually a real flower in the real world. Um, it's in like certain jungles, and it's very carnivorous. I think it like eats flesh or something ridiculous like that. I. Not sure if that's 100% correct, but don't fact check me on that. Um, but the fact that they made such a carnivorous looking plant so friendly and just so joyful and happy makes the design even better. As well as the fact that I've used it many, many times uh, in the past. A lot of spin-off games, a lot of games like Pixelmon and all that stuff. As well as, uh, most notably, in my... Um, Alpha Sapphire playthrough, I used one called Ross, and I believe he was the first one to get to level 100 in that game, even before my Swamper did, which was pretty impressive. So yeah, he's just my silly little plant guy from Gen 1. And I completely destroyed that page. Uh, number 6 is Meganium. Meganium is such an interesting Pokemon to me, because I love it, but I think I might be one of the only people that loves it. Yeah, it's a grass starter and a starter, so it's going to get a baseline level of love, but when you compare it to the love that Typhlosion and Feraligator get, it's completely light and day compared to who gets the most love. Because Meganium, when compared to the other Gen 2 starters, hell, all starters, is probably most people's least favorite, which is absolutely appalling to me because it is my favorite fully evolved starter. And I just think it has such a simple and perfect design. It is a green brontosaurus with a beautiful flower on its neck. 
that's like the epitome of a perfect grass starter. Yes, we've had cooler ones, Hisui and Decidueye especially, but this is like classic. This is OG grass starter, and I think that that just makes it perfect. And the fact that it's weak in battle and it's the worst starter of all time if you put them all against each other doesn't matter to me. I just love the look of this beautiful flower monster. And it actually does kick ass if you use it correctly. In my uh, Soul Silver playthrough, I used Bean the Meganium. And you know what? It kicked ass. So all of you who are like, oh, don't use Meganium, it sucks. I say no. I love Meganium. And I'm going to use it every time over the other two. Because in my opinion, the other two are far, far worse Pokemon. But that's a rant for another day. Number five is Metagross. Metagross is so fucking cool. It is like the Terminator and the Transformer of the Pokemon world. The Terminator! That's like inherently cool. Name one person that doesn't think the Terminator is fucking cool. And name one person that doesn't think Metagross is cool. Exactly. Hardest challenge ever. Not to mention it's a spider. A Pokemon, or sorry, an animal known for instilling fear into other people and shooting venom and whatever, combined with the Terminator and a giant hunkin' supercomputer, and it's a pseudo-legendary with absurd stats? Hello, if that's not the coolest thing you've ever heard, I don't know what the hell is. And if we're just talking on design alone, it's so cool, the whole X across its face, the giant stomping Beldum hands that all form one supercomputer. The fact that this thing can fly, it can pick up its arms and fly like a spaceship. That's so awesome. And not to mention, it's pseudo legendary. That's already a baseline of coolness on top of everything Metagross has to offer. And I figured it's important to know, I have used the Metagross before in my Ultra Moon playthrough. I actually caught it with a heel ball, and which was surprising because, you know, it was probably, and I say probably because I don't remember specifically what happened, one of the situations where I was like, well, I might as well just throw a heel ball and see what happens. And then I caught it, and then I used it for the rest of the game, and it was awesome. And that was a cool memory with Metagross, to add on top of the Metagross Sunday, you could say. Number four is Diglett. Not Wiglet, not Alolan Diglett, just Diglett. And what is there to say about Diglett that already hasn't been said before? I love him. He's just a little mole man. He's so cute. He's a nostalgic from Gen 1. And it's just something, something about the design that speaks to me. And you're going to notice that um, all four of my top four Pokemon aren't very serious. The only one that was here... And even my top five that I thought was here because of coolness alone was Metagross. Everything from here on out is for silly, goofy, whatever you want to call it reasons. And Diglett is no exception. This is the original joke Pokemon. Like, everybody's like, oh, this is the strongest Pokemon ever. It actually has a giant buff body underneath it. It's just this dumb mole that is universally accepted as funny. And I, I love it. It's so goofy. It's so simple and cute. I love it, you know? It's not the most complicated design in the world, obviously. It might actually be one of the simplest designs. But that only makes me like it more. Because, you know, it's not like a supercomputer Terminator spider or anything. It's just Diglett. It's just this little cute simple little guy and I, I love the goofy mole I have to be honest uh, number three is a Lolan Doug trio and hold your pitchforks cuz a this is you universally agreed to be a bad Pokemon outside of a few Owen Wilson jokes and B because I put it above OG Diglett so let me explain uh, to all those Owen Wilson people who are like oh it sucks first of all Strong, strongly disagree. Second of all, for those of you who are like, why is it above Diglett? Um, I like Diglett's design more, obviously, but Sun and Moon specifically was my favorite Pokemon game. It is the Pokemon game 
I have the most nostalgia for. So when you give me this silly Owen Wilson like with the long flowing luscious blonde hair which is incredible by the way never would have thought of that in a million years and you give me this goofy Doug trio from a tropical island I fall in love obviously I used it on my son team obviously it was my first level 100 obviously Diggy the Alolan Doug trio has a very special place in my heart that even Diglett can't reach and obviously I just think it's a funny guy if we take all of my nostalgia out of the way, I look at this guy and I get a smile because of how stupid this is. I can show this to somebody who's never seen Pokemon before and it will get a smile out of them, especially if they know what Doug Trio is, just because of how out there it is. And that's why I love it. Not to mention the blonde wigs alone raise it up like 10 points because the blonde wigs give it so much character, so much personality. Each little mole of Diglett having a different hairstyle gives them a completely different personality, which is awesome. The more personality, the better. And then there's also another nostalgic reason I just thought of. All right, so we're gonna go back to 2017 when Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS, yes, 3DS, not Wii U, uh, so the shitty port, basically, on the DS. Uh, I was playing with my friend, my best friend at the time, and I made a level called Diggy the Doug Trio. And in that level, at the very end, you get to climb over an Alolan Doug Trio made of, uh, like, bricks and those falling tiles. And that is a, uh, memory that I hold in very well regard because it was my favorite level for a long time. And it also just made me love Alolan Doug Trio even more than I already did. Which is a fun little thing. Anyways, number two is Rallet. Um, Rallet is universally agreed to be the best grass starter. And while I would love to be... Oh no, I love Meganium more. Oh, oh no, I love Hisui Decidui more. No, I too give the cake to Rallet. Because it is just a perfect design. In every aspect. This little goofy owl is everything I've ever wanted in a Pokemon, ever. It's so perfect. It's just... amazing. The fact that it's a grass-type starter, that isn't just a plant, or an animal with a plant on it. It's an owl with a grass bow tie, sure, but it's just an owl at the end of the day, and even the color scheme is not really what you'd expect from a grass-type. You would expect some shade of green, or if you're Bulbasaur, some shade of blue. Not really a shade of light brown and white. It is a very interesting, like, barn owl color scheme that I think works very well in its favor. Not to mention, uh, all the times I've used it, all the times I've played through Sun and used it on my team, including the original time, including Legends Arceus with, uh, Albert. And, um, obviously Ash had one in the anime, which was the best part of all, like, ten episodes of the Sun and Moon anime I actually watched. That Stalin one still gets me to this day. I will shed a tear every time I watch that. Besides the point, carried by my Gen 7 nostalgia and his very, very cute little face and bow tie. Rallet is my number two favorite Pokemon. And if you don't know what my favorite Pokemon of all time is, where the hell have you been? There's no way... You just watch through either a two-hour video or a 20-minute video without realizing that the number one Pokemon of all time is Squirtle. That's right. The basic, the most basic answer in the whole world for who's your favorite Pokemon. And I wish it, I could say Rallet or Metagross or Hisui and Decidueye, but I can't. It's Squirtle. It's simple, really. It's a Gen 1 starter. Everybody loves at least one Gen 1 starter. I can see a Squirtle on my desk right now. That's a little Tomy figure. Like, it's Squirtle. What do you want me to say? It's an incredibly cute design with the overall just tininess and the turtleness. Two very cute things in nature. Like, if you give me a tiny tur turtle, 
in my hand that I'm just already going to fall in love, making it a nice shade of blue, and I'm already sold. Obviously, Ash had one in the anime, um, and that was my favorite of the original series that he had. Um, obviously, oh my god, the games. Every time there's a Gen 1 starter option, unless I specifically want to change it up, which is very rare, I will pick Squirtle. Because for me, it's no competition. Neither Gen 1 starter or even any starter on this list. Squirtle and Meganium, Meganium being my sixth favorite Pokemon of all time, are in leagues of their own. Squirtle is in a league of its own. It is above every other Pokemon, no matter what. It's just always going to be my favorite. And that's never going to change. No matter if they make, like, a Wiglet and Alolan Doug Trio fusion and call it, like, Wiggy Wug Trio or whatever, it still won't be my... Okay, it might be my second favorite, but it's not going to top Squirtle because Squirtle, to me, is so special. I have so much nostalgia for Squirtle, and I love the design, and when I think of Pokemon, I think of Squirtle, and that's simple enough. So every time you think Smash Time or... Don't call me Smash Time. Call me Alex. That's my real name. Alex, what's your favorite Pokemon? It's always going to be Squirtle. Without question. Because of how much nostalgia I have for this thing. And that's basically the reason why. And I think we're going to wrap down this two hour and a half long recording session. It's going to be split up into two hour and 15 minute marks and a top 10 video. So for you, it's not an hour, two hours and 30 minutes. But for me, yes, it is. Um, I have to film music for this. So don't be surprised when it's like Pallet Town playing for two hours because I was too lazy to think of new music. When you realize I would have had to find two hours and 30 minutes of different Pokemon music that comes in five minute sections. But that's besides the point. That's for editing me to worry about. As for you to worry about, you all are amazing people. And I think that this was a perfect send-off for the Pokemon tier list series. And I thank you all for enjoying. Some of these videos were the most popular videos on my channel. And I appreciate that very much. But this is the end of my monthly, at least until the last couple months where I kind of dropped the ball, Pokemon tier list series. I really hope you enjoyed, because very soon, I'll be doing my uh, shiny Pokemon tier list and my Skylander tier lists. So the tier list type of video isn't going away, but the OG ranking every Pokemon ever tier list will. And this is a special moment, because as soon as I hit stop recording, edit and upload in the next couple days, we're done. That's all. It's It's over, folks. And I just can't. I can't thank you enough for being here the whole time with me. But, anyways, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Mental health is important. And whatever you're doing today, I hope you just have a wonderful, wonderful time. Whether it's 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. or anywhere in between. Just, I hope I could cheer you up today. But, for right now, thank you very much for watching. And regular... Scheduled videos will return very soon because this was a big project that took a lot of time to make So I hope you like it. Hope you like this series. Hope you like my channel all of that And I will see you next time Bye-bye for now and so long Ranking every Pokemon ever